The After Dinner Gardening Book by Richard W. Langer Introduction The conversion of an apartment from a normal barren city cave to a tropical jungle began quite by accident one bleak winter day. I was sitting huddled in pajamas and two dressing gowns, a wool scarf around my throat, tending a particularly tenacious New York cold. My wife, Susan, in complete innocence, had left beside me a large, warm glass of freshly squeezed lemonade with honey and set off to the local pharmacy for aspirin. I myself sat unsuspecting, half-heartedly reading a spy novel. Dutifully, I took a slug of the lemonade, almost choking on two seeds which had slipped sedituously into the brew. That, I think, was the exact moment it all began. There was no saucer, and to put the seeds back in the lemonade would only be to cart further disaster. Of course I could have gotten up and disposed of them in the kitchen, but such exertion seemed uncalled for. With only a moment's hesitation, I reached over to the bedraggled begonia on the windowsill, abandoned by the previous tenant, and put the pits in the pot. After all, I told myself, they are organic, maybe as they rot, they'll fertilize the poor begonia. In its condition, nothing could hurt. Then I dozed off until Susan returned, totally unaware of what fruit my innocent act would bear. A few weeks later, my eye happened to rest on a lone flower pot and observed a new sprout. Excitedly, I called Susan over, congratulation, congratulating her on rescuing the begonia from the elements of destruction. New York should be not the least of these. She looked for a moment, then told me, It's been invaded. My flower pot's been invaded. Nonsense, I replied. Thereupon she pointed out what I even without even without any botanical training whatsoever, should have noticed, whereas the begonia leaves were somewhat wrinkled and roundish, the new leaves were long, flat, and shiny. Suddenly, from the dregs of memory, floated up a page out of my Biology 101 textbook, Seed Leaves, with elaborate erudition, I explained how seed leaves, the first two leaves on a new plant, never look like the rest. I couldn't explain why, being unable to recall the next page in the text, but for a while anyhow her invasion theory was eliminated. The next two leaves appeared ten days later. They were long, flat and shiny. Slightly shamefaced, I mumbled something about going out for some pipe tobacco, but made my way instead to the local flower shop. As I stood in front of the florist's window, debating how to present my problem to him, the obvious answer appeared behind my reflection in the form of a lemon tree bearing a $9.95 label. I had grown my own tree from seed. Proud as a new father, I paced up and down before the shop window, letting the tree grow in my imagination until it well shaded the beach sun bungalow on the tropical island to which I had transported us. Reluctantly giving up the idea of getting cigars to pass around to friends, I headed for the five and dime. There I purchased a largest pot they had and largest post they had and several pounds of sterilized soil. Newborn plants must be sensitive and all that. Digging out the lemon tree with Susan's nail file, my first miniature gardening tool, I transplanted it to its new home. 
When I called Susan over to inspect my handiwork, I was rewarded by a fit of giggles. Well, granted the pot, about 20 times the size of the plant, did look somewhat underfilled still. Continuing to sulk at dinner time, I ate in silence, oblivious to everything except the thought that when the old cold at Susan dumped the lemon tree started bearing fruit, I'd have the last laugh. We had fresh mango for dessert. After one bite, I stopped suddenly. A pit. Impossible. How could I miss something that size? No, no, I mean, where is it? I threw them out. It was one of those moments I was glad ours was an older apartment without the convenient incinerator, incinerator shoot. I dashed to the kitchen where I rooted around in the garbage like a pig for truffles, rising at last triumphant with two beautiful mango pits. Excusing myself hastily, I ran down to the five and dime, bought two more pots and three huge bags of soil, and returned to Susan's despairing, oh no. Then I began my new career as New York's only plantation manager in earnest.